Enable. Designs and Change, an integrated business advisory group that addresses business challenges across growth, transformation and future readiness, recently organized and hosted the first edition of Transformation Dialogues 2019 in Bengaluru. Standing true to the commitment of transforming the collective while impacting an individual, the company hosted a flipped conference, a first of its kind, which empowered delegates to set the agenda for the dialogues at the event. Founder and CEO Hariraj Vijaykumar delivered his opening keynote to set the context for the dialogues. I'm really excited to be standing here, just opening up this day-long dialogue on transformation. I'm also excited about this new format that we have embraced, the one of Flip Conference. So, throughout the day, we are going to be speaking a lot about frameworks and how we can use frameworks to strategize, how to identify shifts and stuff like that, right? Now, if you look at it, one, it's easy enough to think that, okay, everyone, everyone should be able to do this pretty rapidly. Data doesn't show that. Very few companies seem to be successful in this space, in, in actually traversing transformation journeys. Why is that? Two words. One, agility. And second one is complexity. So, our whole thesis around this is for you to demonstrate agility and acumen to conquer complexity. And this whole one day experience is all about taking first step around that piece. Let's make it a great learning day. Thank you. Breaking away from the traditional format, a flipped conference empowers delegates to develop their point of view in a facilitated roundtable setting. To start the proceedings, Shweta Chubhadi, Chief Business Officer at Design and Change, outlined the process that would be followed through the day. After which, Sanjay Radhakrishnan, Chief Design Officer, gave his presentation on how delegates should approach formulating business strategies. We believe that we are in the beginning of a very exciting journey where we can begin to answer some of these questions. Delegates were then given 60 minutes to formulate and discuss their strategies with one another and get valuable insights from the individual facilitators on their tables. After each delegate had planned their individual strategies, a list of challenges were assimilated collectively from each table, which were then given to the panel to discuss and deliberate on. The first discussion for the day was on defining and aligning goals and how leaders can prepare to face the future of work. So the first category of questions that we curated are around the category of clarity. How do you know the choices that you're making is actually going to create an impact? It all sounds good on paper. And how do you communicate in an environment where you, you yourself may not have that clarity in place, right? Maybe, Sudish, you can start. You know, one of the ways that you start thinking about this is when you think about transformation, are we thinking about a department? Are we thinking about a function? Or are we thinking enterprise? Are we thinking about who's our client? What's going to happen with our client? Why is our client with us? How is this transformation going to change the lives of our client? And my ask is, if you ever see a transformation which is departmental, try and push that up to the enterprise. You have a greater chance of succeeding as a company if that transformation strategy is an enterprise strategy and not just a departmental strategy. Uh, since we have done it, actually, I, I really I agree with him that you need to do it more at an enterprise level. So the, when you're setting up your context, it is across all departments. It's not only for one. And as actually, as we are talking about transformation, it's going to be something much greater than what people have, would have thought. And actually, which we realized it too, that it, it sounds, uh, today I'm saying from experience that because different people came from different backgrounds and basically their aspirations were way higher than what individually they had thought about it actually. And that's what you really see it from the people and the team when you work together actually. I think uh, I kind of uh, disagree on the fact that I think it should start at an enterprise level. Maybe in the earlier times, transformation would probably be, you know, when you think of transforming a company or a policy, it would probably would be a two-year or three-year exercise. Now there is a need to probably have it at a much shorter time period. 
and the need can come from any of the stakeholders. It can come from a customer end, it can come from a client end, it can come from the employees themselves, it can come from a region, right? It can come from a product that you have in the market. Uh, so that diversity becomes really important. So I think being open to that at all levels is an important aspect in my perspective. Talking to real customers is a critical step to give you clarity and it, while it's commonsensical, it's a step that is often missed out. Secondly, marketing is no longer about marketing to your external customer. As far as transformation goes, every employee, team member is an internal customer. So if you want something to happen and you want the village to participate, you need to communicate, you need to make it participative. Philips being the large company that it is, it is a problem that or a challenge that happens every day. So for example, yesterday we had the leadership kickoff for Philips globally. One of the challenges that has been faced by the company earlier was the way the strategy was being cascaded downwards and the specific goals that were supposed to be executed every year. So at least I, can, I have seen over the last five years the way we've been actually cascading the strategy, we have changed the whole approach and the whole process. The whole cascading now, the, the extended, extended, extended leadership team, it's about 1,500 people. And it's a global cascading event that happens with those 1,500, 2,000 people. It's a five-hour marathon session, which goes late into the night. But then it is the job of each center or the each country head to, you know, again, follow the same process. So from being a five-step process to get it down to the, to the last employee, it now has become a two-step process. That is something that is, you know, we've been doing better than what it is, but again, that's still the key to uh, getting things done. So I want to quickly open up to the floor and see if there's any question that you guys have. Maybe one question. It's like a huge change when so much is happening on you from an outside in perspective. How do you manage the transformation at scale? When you are geographically very large or whether you are uh, product wise, very your product lines are large, irrespective of how large, what scale means for you, you always got to think about having the right person. You got to put them into influential roles where actually they can, they are empowered to influence decision making. Right. Thank you. That was wonderful. Thank you so much. I want to first thank all the panelists for taking the time to come here and share their perspectives. And uh, hopefully you enjoyed the conversation. Thank you so much. After the session, delegates were given time to write down their observations from the discussion to help them build strategies for their organization's transformation journey. The conference also had masterclass sessions from partner representatives, Toolwire and Degree, two companies working towards transforming employee skilling and employee engagement using technology. Degree really set out to be a better answer to the question, tell me about your education. Almost everybody I've asked that question to around the world over the last five and a half years answers it in terms of what was the last college or graduate school degree they earned. But as we know, people over their careers learn from hundreds of different platforms at different times for different needs and in different ways. The challenge is most people have no way to represent that skill building or their education, again, beyond the degree they have. And if they haven't actually completed a degree, they have no way to even represent what they're capable of. And so we have chosen to attack that problem by partnering with the largest companies in the world to help them transform the talent in their organizations, to put the employee at the center of a next generation enterprise learning platform that enables and embraces lifelong learning, helps them find the next best learning opportunity for them, and allows them to track and represent and transact on that learning and what skills they have over the entirety of their careers. Designs and Change recently hosted the first edition of Transformation Dialogues in Bengaluru. The unique flipped conference format of the event gave delegates the opportunity to have some of the biggest business transformation challenges addressed by an esteemed panel of experts. At the event, Designs and Change also launched a new Nworks platform, giving users access to a tool where teams can converge with experts to chart out the business transformational journey of their organization. Designs and Change was born two years ago with two intents, and it's right up here on the screen behind me. Our intent was one,
transform the collective to impact the individual. Taking that intent forward, today NWORKS is born. And imagine using NWORKS for doing exactly what you did today at your tables, but with your intact team. Imagine as a user, as a team member, as a leader of a team, having access to a facilitator or a coach exactly when you need that person. So it's with great pleasure that we invite you to test the beta version of NWORKS. Giving delegates the opportunity to discuss how technology and talent can be used as master levers for digital transformation, the second session of the Transformational Dialogues had industry experts and leaders address the challenges put forward by the delegates. So I'm going to now dive straight in to the questions, the issues that came from all of you. So this notion of getting past a certain set of beliefs that I have, which, uh, which probably makes me reluctant to go through this change. What's your advice? What's your commentary around this, right, in terms of these belief challenges? It, it can be a good attempt. Uh, to my mind, you need to make a connection between what you are today, what is what you will be in the future, how you can transform and how you can change and what it means to you. People should be able to A, connect personally, people should be able to connect organizationally, people should be able to connect socially. So if you find the substantial reasons why you want to change, then you will find all the connects. Then people will be willing to change uh, and there will be a lot of uh, apprehension, a lot of question marks. What is in it for me? How is it going to impact my job? How am I going to change my skill sets? All of that. In the process, we will have casualties. Yeah. We will have, I don't know, my personal experience is at least 50% will not make it. So, it is tough. There is no great answer to me. I, I, I don't think I can give you a great answer, but I can no, only give you my view. this is a great start. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to make a bit of a switch now, right? I think to speak about hashtag startup challenges. How should we look at identifying the shifts that are required for transformation in a, in a startup context. And how much of that shift is too much? Yes, you can pivot and you can die. And um, that's part of the journey. But how do you take care of those shifts? Uh, one of the simple things that I learned uh, through our strategy conversations and uh, as we were growing up as a company, uh, and we're still so nascent, we're like a, a small little speck right now in the entire grand scheme of things, but keeping that in mind, I think one of the most important things is connecting personal success to the organization's success. So vision and purpose, completely important. And people don't buy the how and the what, people buy the why. Right? So when you say people buy the why, it's not about the product, it's people who work for you buy the why. So a lot of buzz around the startup ecosystem being built in India, but one of the things that's very essential if you map successful startups uh, to the ones that have failed, which the percentage is great uh, of the failures, it's because of this connection of these dots. Because you do go through pivots, right? Uh, you do go, go through market changes. You have to be agile. Um, and, um, you know, if you're not doing that and not recognizing the value of those pivots, uh, I, th I think that's, that's wrong. That's completely wrong. So I think a startup is a company which is starting with very few beliefs, right? The, that set of beliefs that you are really working with is very small. But if you're a large organization, that belief set is very large, right? So if you're a small company, the ability of data to be then authentic in changing your belief is that much faster, right? So uh, that's, how, that's how I look at a startup. It's a, it's a small set of beliefs that will rapidly change based on what you see today. Large organizations have this challenge that the beliefs are large, some very wise, but accumulated over a lot of time. And as technology changes, as, as products change, you need to quickly go and iterate there, right? So the, uh, the challenge around a startup is working at this hectic pace to keep your belief system small and uh, very agile. Again, making a switch, right? I think on to set of, think of it as performance challenges, right? Human performance challenges, if you will. So this, as, uh, as the, uh, the delegates were starting to work on identifying shifts, one pattern of issues that they came out with is saying, look, how do you set the right goals in our organizations? I'm again picking up from the first panel in the morning and gentleman was saying the, the why of transformation. And he said why of the transformation has to follow organization, then department, and to the individual. 
And to me, the performance goals of the individuals have to have those linkages. Since we are talking in terms of the transformation, the personal goal or a personal KRA which has been put up, that has to have a linkage how it will make a change in the transformation of the department. So uh, uh, simple terms, if these linkages are not met, then either we are setting the individual to a failure, the department to a failure, or the whole transformation program is going to see multiple actions, chaotic actions happening all over the places, everybody believing that they have done a successful transformation, but some will never be bigger than the parts. Thank you so much to all of you panelists. Brilliant conversation and absolutely unexpected commentary, right? So thank you all so much for bringing this perspective to this uh, set of delegates. The final session for the day focused on building strategies for scaling the digital transformation journey of an organization and some of the challenges faced by CEOs across industries in planning a smooth transition for the organization through the transformational process. The question, one of the challenges thrown by the audience is that leaders communicate the agenda of transformation that could be a digital transformation agenda or some other transformation agenda as that message percolates down the organization sometimes the message gets diluted how can this alignment gap be addressed you have to keep the message simple right it has to be so simple that everybody should be able to relate to that right and ask the employees what do you think right and then they will paraphrase and come back but also ask the employees how do they feel about it and, and be honest and, 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 and be ready to take some feedback, right? And you might get some feedback from somewhere which might change your messaging. Uh, companies have to do this all the time. You know, nothing to do with transformation when you talk about communication here. You know, what people really want to know is what is in it for them. You know, are you addressing that one simple question, good or bad, you need to communicate that and keep moving on. So, you know, I, I, would, I would say, you know, I mean, one is to say so much is happening in the world. Are we getting ready to fight the battle and all that is, is one part of the story. But I would say, you know, I think what people really want to know it is what's in it for them. Is organization investing in doing something for them? If so, then communicate. Otherwise, you know, may not be the right time to do that. And it's interesting you speak about a feedback loop. All, many of you spoke about that. Uh, that feedback loop can be hard for a leader. And this is also a question from one of the audience members, which is leaders can shut down. Leaders are not very transparent. Sometimes they are the cause of the alignment gap. So what can leaders do differently? Unlearning it is actually the key to that because a feedback loop is not a one-time feedback loop. It needs to be a continuous feedback loop. And then also, if you get the feedback, you must be willing to recognize that your initial assumption was maybe wrong. Talking about uh, digital transformation, and the great point, keep it simple, right? You go and ask, uh, oh, how do you define digital? If there are hundred people in the room, you will have hundred uh, definitions. The simplest I have heard about digital is, digital is virtual address to a physical asset. That's it. And if the messaging is simple, and a leader is you know, a leader can understand these five words. If leader is not listening, why, why, what, how much, what does it take to communicate to the leader at least in simplest terms so that he understands? And maybe that's where communication from bottom up, the generation that understand digital technology better, the communication should be bottom up. And that came up also, it's a two-way communication and things like that. If leaders are not listening, use appropriate language to make them listen. Manish, I have one question which I think you are the right person to answer, which is from a lot of entrepreneurs in the room. Once I start executing, my problem is how do I ensure I have the finances to execute the way I truly want to? Yeah, you have no option, right? You don't have the finances. So you execute without them. So you change your plan based on that. So uh, uh, I think uh, a lot of people ask this question, chicken and egg, and it happens to us all the time. And we don't, uh, uh, you know, you don't want to spend, waste time uh, trying to raise finances with investors. You want to spend time with customers and team, right? I think that's when design comes out. So you start designing backwards instead of wasting time figuring out finances. Thank you, everyone. To summarize, I think what I'm hearing you say is that the resources to execute exist within our ecosystem. 
we need to find the people who can leverage those resources to truly create transformation. So thank you very much. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, big round of applause to our panel. And I, I'm very happy to say it's been a wonderful day today with all my delegates being happy. The key takeaway from this event would be how when you go back Monday morning, when you enter the office, you, you would have your task at one side and you would have your objectives of the week at one side. So now you really know what would make you one step closer to reach those objectives by defining, aligning and designing your task well at work to execute. Focus. Ideate. Innovate. Enable.